that is going to look like in light of the past eight months? Well, as as the great American philosopher Yogi Berra once said, it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. <laughs> but um, I, I, I can't imagine a circumstance uh, that the Russians would allow Kharkov and Odessa to remain in Ukraine. At the very least, I expect that to happen. Perhaps everything uh, on the eastern bank of the, the Dnieper, up you know Chernigov, places like this, and then also, as as I mentioned, over to Odessa, which would then connect them to uh, Transnistria. Uh, what happens after that? I don't know. Uh, it, it, it would seem to me that they have to then install some sort of friendly government in Kiev. If there is to be a rump Ukraine at all. It would have to be one that essentially takes its cues from Moscow. Um, that's that's going to be a tall order. I don't know how they accomplish that militarily. And in saying this, by the way, I don't rule out that the Russians could mess this up. They still could mess this up. Um, they they and when I say they, I mean primarily President Putin have shown a very strong tendency always to want to reach an agreement with their quote Western partners, no matter how clear it becomes to them at least it should become to them, that they have no partners in the West and that no agreement is possible with Western powers that they can trust, they, the Russians can trust, will actually be kept. Um, my biggest concern, and I'm saying this as an American, not as somebody who's looking at it through a Russian lens, uh, my biggest concern is that at some point th they may decide to cut a deal, you know, if you will, take half a loaf, which uh, limits how much uh, of Ukraine uh, will will be uh, either assumed to the Russian Federation or become some sort of new state, and Novorossiya or something like that, which I think is increasingly not likely. Um, in, in exchange for promises from the Western powers, a kind of a Minsk three, if you will, which to my mind would be the biggest possible disaster for everybody. It virtually guarantees that in the very near future there will be another bigger war one that cannot be contained. It seems to me that any, as many as people who, who in goodwill are calling for negotiations, that it, it, any move toward a negotiated solution is probably going to be the worst possible outcome, that it is better for everybody, for Russia to achieve its military goals, to dictate a settlement in Ukraine, uh, force a humiliating defeat for NATO and for the European Union, which I do not identify, by the way, with my country, America or American interests, and that some sort of a fundamental shift occurs in the global situation. I, I realize that's a tall order, but that's the only positive outcome I can see here. 